the title of this sermon, Conversions, Transformations, Evolutions, and Voyages, All Blessed by God. Will you pray with me? God of conversions, transformations, evolutions, and voyages, be with us this morning as we consider your word. And life examples of those who follow you, a Roman and a Jew, Moses and McGregor, may we too be led by the urging of your Holy Spirit, leading us on new faith voyages of our own. And may the words of my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, ever-present creator, mother, father, healer for us all. Amen. First, we see conversion. Cornelius. Did you catch he was Italian? Did you catch, do you remember that your history? Italians were Romans. Uh-oh. They're not Jewish. They're not Israelite. So this new guy, this Roman guy, who now worships the risen Jesus, gets a vision that he has to send for Peter, the Jewish guy, who walked with the teacher Jesus and now follows the risen Christ. Then we see transformation. Peter gets a vision that all the hoopla of Jewish culture about what to eat and what not to eat, which animal is sacred and which animal is unclean, is just that, hoopla, made up by people. In his vision, Peter hears clearly that God points out this wonderful irony. God created it, so it must be sacred. This is a very early version of that refrigerator ma magnet that says, God don't make junk. Right? Have you heard that? Anybody not heard that? Maybe some of the younger disciples. When I was in college, it was a thing. Okay. God don't make junk. Turn to your neighbor and say, God don't make junk. God, don't make junk. All right, now that we agree, we then see evolutions. Jesus said that God so loved the world, just like the Samaritans who were of the world. Cornelius and his Italian friends were of the world. God so loved the world. And Peter understood that their eating traditions needed to evolve. Their circumcision decisions and traditions needed to evolve. God shows no partiality. Every person who practices righteousness before God is acceptable to God. Living by faith will lead conversions and transformations and evolutions and Living by faith will lead to voyages. Reverend James Macar MacArthur. Jeez. Oh, can you take that out of the tape? Can you just delete that? Because I know it's McGregor. We all know it's McGregor. Reverend James McGregor, pastor of the Achadui. Repeat after me. Achadui. Yeah, good. Achadui. Presbyterian Church in Northern Ireland. And sometimes our friends from Achadui are with us, so turn around and wave to that camera. Hi, friends in Northern Ireland. Okay. He knew that despite the unknown danger and the indescribable risks, he had to take a bold move and arrange for some of his church folk to go to the New World in North America. Now, I say he had to, and we can only... Imagine the situation that must have been so horrible to lead them on such a journey. Several years ago, we had a lovely visit from our friends in, from Ahadui, and I learned something. I thought I understood and knew what religious persecution was. I thought I knew what it meant. 
I did my junior year abroad in the 70s, and even at that time, there was fighting between the Protestants and the Catholics. I made an assumption that religious persecution that McGregor felt was probably because of the Catholics. Oh no, the Church of England, the Anglican Church today, cousins to the Episcopalians, that was the national religion. Presbyterians were not recognized. The example that Michelle and Linda gave me was this. The Church of England owned the graveyard. Your Presbyterian loved one couldn't be buried in the graveyard. That sounds like the world that Peter is coming from. Cornelius is outside of their religious community, and he wants to be recognized as a follower of Jesus Christ. The people in Achadui wanted to be recognized with marriage and burial, but the Anglican church would not allow it. They couldn't get married either? Hmm. So on the eve of their departure, from Northern Ireland to North America. In 1718, the Scots-Irish group heard Pastor McGregor quote Moses. Lord, if thy presence go not with me to the new land, carry us not up hence. Exodus records that God said to Moses, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. McGregor believed it. The people believed it. They left the security of their homeland. They left the prejudice and discrimination of that homeland, too. They sought, with God's blessing, a new home where they could live as lawful Presbyterians. When Reverend James McGregor and the families arrived safely in New England, it's written, written that they sang and praised God with Psalm 137. We don't know the tune. So we can't sing it. So just imagine. How could I sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remarkably, everyone from Achadui arrived. And a little bit of prejudice going on over here. Boston didn't want them. So they managed to survive on that boat the whole winter. Starts with a B, Belfast? Up the main coast in a boat. They couldn't get off the boat. Wow, that's faith. That's a voyage blessed by God. In April of 1719, those Scots-Irish families came to this area called Nutfield because we have so many nut trees. That's right. On the north shore of Beaver Lake, McGregor preached the first sermon on April 12th, 1719. He quoted Isaiah. He will be like a hiding place from the wind, a shelter from the tempest, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of the great rock in a weary land. Later that spring, Reverend James McGregor was officially called to be the pastor of the first church in the area, this church, and at his installation, they quoted Ezekiel 37. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will bless them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary among them forevermore. Now that sermon lasted at least an hour and a half. I don't know, 42 pages is awful long. I love you. We're not doing that. You can thank me later. I'm almost done. And I learned that there were approximately 45 pastors that have served this church. So that's a good number. I might be 45th. 
300 years later, here we are. We are thriving. We are happy. We love God, and we know that God loves us. God was with them on their voyage. Oh, Presbyterians. There was no Presbytery in New England. So they couldn't really be Presbyterian because in the Presbyterian, see, we have, we have, there's rules here too. So it wasn't until McGregor's son went to divinity school that that then sent him over to West Parish, where East Parish, West Parish, and founded the Londonderry Presbyterian Church. That's right. And then later, South Parish. Anybody guess? Wyndham Presbyterian Church. Oh, gosh. Ha you know, the pastor of the Wyndham, Wyndham Presbyterian Church says half of his people are from Wyndham and half of them are from Wyndham, and that's still true today. Okay, so First Church 300 years ago never saw the need for that denominational attachment, and so they were a community church for a couple hundred years. And then a couple decades ago, joined the United Church of Christ. So we're babies in the United Church of Christ, and we've been congregational forever. God has blessed us over and over. God continues to bless us as we continue to encounter conversions, transformations, evolutions, and voyages. We remember God's faithfulness with heartfelt gratitude. Blessed be.